Hey, I'm Melissa Joan Hart, and I'm flashing back to Drive Me Crazy. I'm a freak, aren't I? Drive Me Crazy was the quintessential teen high school movie, right? About the, the girl and the guy who live next door to each other. Did they have a prom date kind of trick your... Actually, the, the original title was uh, Girl Gives Birth to Own Prom Date. But at the time, there were a lot of girls giving birth at the prom. So they changed the title to Next to You. And then that's what, that was our working title. And then when the movie actually came out, they called it Drive Me Crazy because of the Britney Spears song. So 1999 was a big year for teen movies, and Drive Me Crazy, I mean, I think it holds up pretty well because it always reminded me of Can't Buy Me Love, which I think is still sort of timeless. That same sort of story of the boy and the girl that use each other to further their, you know, gains with, with other people or with being popular or with dating. And then, of course, they find love, of course. I think it holds up pretty well. I mean, the fashion and stuff is very much of the time. The music is very much of the time. But I think that the story still resonates. The most 90s part of Drive Me Crazy is probably the end, like the, not prom, but the, the, the bicentennial dance we do, and, um, and just us like kind of dancing around and what we were wearing at the time, because people don't wear that kind of thing to school dances anymore. They dress a little more skimpy these days. Oh, this was the, um, the premiere, the LA premiere of uh, Drive Me Crazy, and I remember my acting coach gave me this beautiful vintage bag that I still have. That was awesome, and um, Eduardo Lucero made this awesome dress for me, which was just kind of fun and a little different for me because it wasn't too skimpy. It was like really glam, and Adrian's hair looked great, and um, I got to bring a whole bunch of friends, so it was like a glamorous, fun night. Oh, okay, so this one. <sighs> um, this is the New York premiere, and a lot happened this night. Um, you can see I was kind of crying a little bit. My eyes are red. I had done a whirlwind tour of New York. I was like really in my own head because I was also being told that I was being fired because I was on the cover of Maxim magazine and I was going to be fired from my show Sabrina this night. So not only was I fired from a movie, thought I was going to be fired from Sabrina, broke up with my boyfriend, had to say goodbye to my family, was exhausted. But everybody was making it about Britney that night. So I was like, well, I, so I'm over here like crying <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> like literally, I think of it as like one of the, the weirdest nights of my life. One of these nights that seemed like the world was ending, but really everything turned out just fine. Well, Nicole, I had a really lovely time. Call me? Yeah, whatever. The most realistic part of the plot of Drive Me Crazy was probably just the fact that love can happen in unexpected places um, and that friendships and, and love can develop from friendships. Probably the most unrealistic is I don't know, I think the part floating down the river, all the girls on the rafts and the boys on the hillside and stuff, I think that was a little, that was a little set up. We were all on rafts in the river and I was so worried that, you know, I wouldn't look good in a bathing suit and it's so silly, like, to be in your, when you're in your teens and 20s and even 30s, please don't complain about your body, your body's great, like, just enjoy it while you can. Yeah, Adrian at the time had just done a big Sundance movie, so he was a big indie kid and then he's coming into this kind of pop culture movie um, and I was kind of queen of pop culture TV at the time. So it was fun, we had a really good time together and we have a great relationship still to this day and uh, we don't get to see each other as much as we'd like. But um, you know, at the time he was sort of like cool kid on set, not really sure how he felt about it, but I think he grew to really love the experience and uh, you'd have to ask him, but in, in my head we had a great time together. Yeah, Adrian definitely looked better before the makeover. Um, it's one of the few movies where they really got it wrong. When I, he became my boyfriend, fake boyfriend. We like glued his hair to the side and for some reason I don't know why that was supposed to look better. It didn't. You know, I think that's why he still wears his hair a little shaggier. Actually it's a little shorter now, but um, but I think that yeah it was a mistake to just sort of do the comb over thing they did on the movie. And I mean my red top wasn't the best either. Like I had this red, it was built for me, but like who is allowed to wear that to school? I had a full midriff showing. Even today you can't do that. I really liked doing the stuff in the car with Adrian. We were driving down the street, singing, other cars are pulling up next to it. It took a really long time to get that stuff right with the cameras and the cars and all moving at the right, stopping at the right place and whatnot. But I remember it was just late at night and a bunch of us just blasting music and hanging out and having fun. So it wasn't, they weren't like really difficult scenes. I remember there was a scene with Adrian and I in a, um, sitting kind of on the roof of a car um, at the burger place and we we're sort of like hanging out in the parking lot. And that was a really great scene. Like I worked really hard with like an acting coach and stuff and had really a lot of fun with Adrian with that scene actually working. But the but the most fun, like kind of don't have to think about the lines and whatnot was in the car. Prince Charming is a d bring on the frogs. Ribbit. Prince Charming is a d bring on the frogs. I might be using that again someday soon when my boys start dating or something. <laughs>
The music video, it's funny because Adrian and I each had our own trailers and we were kind of keeping to ourselves, but I was told I was going to be able to dance in this movie, I mean in the video. And then finally they call us in and they're like, okay, go in that DJ booth and just dance. I'm like, whoa, 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 choreography? Anyone? I don't know how to dance. Like, I just dance when the music's loud and I have a gin and tonic. I just dance. And uh, they were like, no, just dance, do your thing. So I had to just kind of come up with my own moves. Brittany had full-on choreography. I'm over here like, that's it.